Greetings, and welcome to the second part in our video lecture series on lists. In the previous video, we talked about simple one-dimensional lists and how we can use them to store information about a single type. So for example, uh, a list that contains a bunch of PFT scores or swim times. In this video, we're going to take that one step further and we're going to show you how to construct tables using lists. And in that way, I can have a table that has lots of information about an airplane, like what the airplane's designator is, what its nickname is, uh, where it was built, that sort of thing. All of this is possible using the techniques that we just talked about in the previous lesson. So as a quick reminder, a list is basically a variable that we can use in Python to store lots of things. So let's say, for example, if I wanted to create a list of PFT scores, what I would do is type list of PFT scores, I would put equals, and instead of a value, I would use the brackets. And these brackets here tell, we, tell Python that we're dealing with a list. And in this case, particularly, we're talking about an empty list. And there are two ways that you can get values into a list. If you know the values in advance, all you have to do is just have the brackets, and then you can put the values inside of your list and separate each value with a comma. However, there are times when we don't know in advance what the values that we need to put in the list are. So let's say, for example, we're getting swim times from the user, and we have to put it in the list. To do that, we use the append function. And all append really does is whatever I put in parentheses, it adds it to the back of the list. So until now, the lists we've been talking about are what we call one-dimensional lists. They are a list that contain a single type of information. So for example, I have a list of PFT scores, a list of swim scores, a list of airplane designators. There are times though where we might want to know more than just one value. So for example here, let's say I have a list of PFT scores. Um, it might be nice to know who got the 500, who got the 251, right? It might be nice to know the name of that person. It might be nice to know their squadron, right? So there's lots of information that you might want to store about a particular entity. And a single list isn't going to do it, right? This list, this one dimensional list just isn't capable of holding multiple pieces of information. So the way we get around it sometimes is just to have multiple lists, but that can be cumbersome, right? You'd have a three different variables and you'd have to remember which list you want to use at a particular time. So what else does Python offer us? Well, remember in the previous videos when I showed you that we can store numbers and characters and words within lists? Well, it turns out that we can also use lists to store other lists. So for example, here is a table for all intents and purposes, but all it really is is a list that contains lists inside of it. So each one of these blue lists is a list inside of the bigger red list. All right. So each one of these represents a row in our table and you can almost break it down into columns, right? The first thing in each one of these little lists is the name of the person. The second thing is always the score, and the third thing is always their squadron. So we construct a table and we use lists to store that information in Python. So you can think again of a two-dimensional list as just being a list of lists. It's really just a table. Each row in the table represents one entity, so like a person, an airplane, that sort of thing. And then if we want to access a specific cell in the table, we can basically use the bracket notation. So here's an example of the bracket notation in action. So let's say I have a PFT table, and here I have information on five cadets. So I have their name in the first column, and then I have their uh, score in the second column. So if I want to print off a particular row, all I have to do is say PFT table, and then I use the brackets. So the first set of brackets tells me the row. So let's say I want to print off the second row. This is index number one, because we start at zero. So if I do this and I print off, I will get the whole row. But if I want to grab a specific cell, so for example here, let's say I want to get this score here. I would type first the row index and then the column index. So this is column zero, this is column one. So I would do one, one. And then when I press here, I get the actual score itself. So the same thing works in this table, right? It's always row, then column. So at row zero, column one is a 251 in this example. Row four, column zero is Liam's name, all right? So we can also loop through each of these and I will show you how to do that in a few slides. So let's practice making a two-dimensional list. And to do that, we're going to write a program 
that reads in pairs of student names and PFT scores. So we're going to just keep getting the name and then their PFT score over and over and over until the user types the word last. And we're going to store it in a two-dimensional list. So let's go ahead and do that. The way that we would start is we need to create a table. So we'll just create an empty list. So we'll just say it's our 2D list for PFT scores. And then we can set that equal to PFT table. And it will just, we'll start off with just a blank list. This is the same thing we would do if it was a one dimensional list. Now we're going to do that trick where we get the sentinel value, right? So we're going to get the first name and we're going to, that's just going to be a straight up input. And then we're going to keep getting names until the user types last. So we can say while the name is not equal to last. Then inside the loop, what we can do is get the PFT score for that name. All right, and we'll say PFT score equals int. And then uh, we will go ahead and actually just uh, get the next name. So if we test this here, what we will see is I can over and over and over, I can get a name, a PFT score, another name, a PFT score, another name, a PFT score. And then when I type last, my program ends. So all of this works so far. So now we actually need to add it to our table. So what we need to do is we need to consider what our table is going to look like. So we should have, if I was building a table, we would have the leftmost column. So if I was to build a table, the leftmost column would be the name of the person. And then the next column would be the PFT score. So to do that, what I'm essentially doing is saying my new row in my table is going to be equal to, and here's where I create my row, and it's a little list. And it's going to be the name, and it's going to be the PFT score. So I've created this row, and now I'm going to append it to our table. So table.append the new row. All right. So here we are adding the new row to the table. So when I press play, you can actually see this in action, right? If I type A, 250, B, 500, C, 450, and I type last, if I go to the view and I watch my variables, you can actually see that I've constructed my table. It just shows it on one line, but you can see this is the first row in my table, this is the second row in my table, and this is the third row in my table. So if you're having trouble logically figuring out what's going on, uh, I would like to show you just a quick animation. This is the code that we basically wrote. Uh, what we're doing here is every time we get a, a PFT score and a name, what we're doing is we're constructing a new row that contains in the first column the name and in the second column the score. And here we append it to our PFT table. Right? So then we do it again. So we get the next name and we add it to our PFT table. We get the next row. We add it to our PFT table. And we keep doing that over and over and over. So now let's say we actually want to look at all the values in this table that we created. So let's say, for example, we're going to read in pairs of student names for students until the user types the word last, print out the names of every person who passed. So this is very similar to the previous set of videos where we talked about having two loops. So in the first loop, we're getting the values of all the people and putting them in the table, right? So we're getting their names, we're getting their PFT score, we're adding it to the table, and then we're doing it again. Now we're going to look back through the loop. And again, I'm showing you this way because I'm setting a pattern so that we can solve other types of problems. But in the second loop, we're going to look at all the PFT scores again to see who passed. And the way that we do this, just like with the case with one-dimensional loops, we can use a for loop to look at our table. So we can say for row in PFT table. And inside of here, now we have each row. So actually, I could just print the row and you could see this. So for example, A250, um, B500, we'll just go with two rows for now. So you actually see each row. Now, instead of printing out the row, now I can look at their, get the name and the PFT score. So the name in this row is, if you look at this row, it's the first column, right? So in this row, the first column contains the name, so that's index zero. And the next one is the PFT score. And that is column one. So what we are basically doing right now 
is extracting the columns from each row, right? And now we can check. So we can say if the PFT score is greater than or equal to 250, then we're going to go ahead and print the name. So if I do this again, so this time A will make sure they have a 200, B will have a 500, C will have a 450, and when I press last, only B and C get printed. So again, what we're doing is that each we're looking at these columns and we're looking at each row. So for each row in our table, all we have to do is look at this column and see if it's greater than you know the passing score. And if so, we print column zero. So there are some downsides to using two-dimensional lists over one-dimensional lists. And the big one is that all the functions we talked about in the previous set of videos, they don't work exactly the same way. So for example, sort is kind of weird. So let's say for example here, let's go back to our original PFT table. And let's say I wanted to sort the table. Well, it's exactly the same in the sense that I can say sort, and then I can print out the table. Well, watch what happens when I do this. I'm going to print out the PFT table. You might want it to sort by the PFT scores, but when I press play, you'll see what it actually does is it sorts by the name, right? So it's actually going in alphabetical order. And this is an important distinction. Whatever's in the first column, that's what's going to get sor sorted first. And if there's a tie, then it will sort by the second column. So if you want to sort a table, make sure the thing you want to sort it by is the first thing in your table. Min and max work kind of. So for example, uh, I could say uh, find the max value in the table. So if I do this, uh, print max of PFT table, this is going to be a little weird. What it's doing is it's going to print out the biggest thing in this column. Uh, Michelle just happens to be the, the last thing in alphabetical order. So that's the biggest thing in here. So for example, if I wanted it to be, uh, if I wanted to sort it the other way, find the biggest PFT score, what I would have to do actually is flip it, right? I'd have to say, I'm just going to give them letter names for now because I just totally forgot their actual names. But if we do this and I press play, you'll see now that it actually did get us the maximum. And notice it didn't give us the maximum PFT score. It gave me the row with the maximum PFT uh, score. So I could say max row is equal to this. And if I want to print off the max PFT score, I would say print max row. And in this case, the PFT score is now in column zero. So now when I press play, I actually get that max value. So again, it's very similar to what we were doing with a one dimensional list, but there's some nuances. Length works exactly the same. So you can, uh, in this case, I can print out the length of PFT table. And what this will do is it prints out five because there are five rows in your table, right? It doesn't tell you how many columns are in each row. But some, so far, some does not seem to work. Um, if anybody figures out what it's actually doing, uh, that'd be great. But some does not appear to work on tables at all. So the common mistakes that when we deal with two-dimensional lists is that we tend to have people do stuff like they'll accidentally make a list that looks something like this. They'll have not the same number of columns. And that can create problems for you if you're trying to iterate and look at all of the, uh, the values. You may, for example, look at all the PFT scores and then not have a name on this row. So that's one common error. Uh, columns containing different information. So sometimes people make the weird mistake of doing this, right? Uh, B250 uh, or something like this, where now the, the column doesn't contain the same type of information. It's, it's kind of jumbled. That makes it very difficult to use a table with it. So the big thing to get out of this is that we want to draw our table before we code it. If you don't do that, it's going to be very hard for you to track what's going on and you're probably going to end up making unnecessary mistakes. So that's it. Uh, in this lesson, I showed you how to use lists to construct tables, and we showed you how to put stuff in the table, how to create new rows in our table, and how to construct loops that can look at each row and look at each column. In many ways, this is very similar to what you did with File.io. We're just talking about it in more general terms. Uh, 
Thank you for watching this video. Take the time, uh, give it some practice, let us know if you need help, and uh, we'll see you in class. Bye.